Welcome to Ritual Scale Modeling. This is part 4 of Revels Grace Lightning 484, Scales 1 to 25. In this part, I'll be um, completing the, the model, so all the painting and, uh, that is getting done, uh, putting on the extra little bits and pieces on the bodywork and so on. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. So to kick things off, I'm going to be painting the main body shell. So the um, paint I'm using is Revo Aquacolor 04 Gloss White. Now, there's a couple of ways you can uh, go around uh, this. Um, gloss White is quite difficult to paint with um, if you're using a brush. It can leave brush strokes uh, and things like that. Now, there's two couple of ways that you can uh, approach it. First of all, you can um, approach it with uh, one of my techniques, which is um, almost dry brushing the paint. Uh, so you put a tiny amount of paint on your brush, um, take any excess off, and then paint in a circular motion um, and build up the layers. This can take a lot of time to do, many, many coats to do it in. So I've opted for the other method, and this is the method that generally most people use uh, when painting uh, large areas with a brush. I've got a flat brush here and I'm putting a very thin coat on. So it's uh, not a lot of paint on the brush and I'm just painting in one stroke all the way down. I'm going over each stroke lightly, not putting any pressure on the brush whatsoever, barely holding it in my hand. This all helps to eliminate brush strokes as well as the fat flat headed brush as well does help with this. Now it will take about three possibly four coats for it to to work. Uh, but just turn the light off there you can see the difference from the primer to the actual gloss paint. So I'll put it on about a uh, three coat coats uh, at the white uh, on and uh, so I've left that to dry. It took about three days to do this I, I should point out. Each coat, uh, coat I should say I, I left to dry overnight. Now that's not really necessary with acrylic paints um, but because it's the light colour I wanted to make sure it was completely hardened before I put on the next coat. A bit excessive with time waste but there you go. The part you see me fitting here is if I just sit behind the radiator grill. Um, I've actually placed this on in the wrong position but I'll go into that in a little bit later on. So now I'm using Revo Aquacolor 08 Matte Black and this is for the battery. And then it's Tamiya's X13 Metallic Blue and that is for the motor that runs the top cover of the conver convertible. So it's the roof um, action motor. I'm using Revo Aquacolor 90 Silver just to add a little bit of detail then to the um, engine bulkhead. The first part to be assembled is the heater and as you can see it just goes onto this peg on the um, reverse side of the bulkhead. The top part is just painted in matte black. The battery gets fitted on the sidewall inside the engine bay compartment and the motor for the roof just goes on side the front of the bulkhead. Moving on to the windows and it's Revo Aqua 90 Silver once more and I'm using this to paint the frame of the windows. And then it's Revo Aquacolor 302 Silk Black. And this is for the sun visors inside the uh, part of the windows. I think it's a bit strange that they're already connected to the windows. Uh, but that's how it, the kit's designed, I suppose. Next, I have to uh, cut off the supporting struts um, of the car. Um, the, the, these parts are just there to support the car. It's also a handy thing to keep on while you're painting. It's something to hold on to. So first of all, I have a place in the engine bulkhead. I'm then fitting the interior compartment onto its main frame. And then it was time to fill, fit the interior compartment in. Um, I only use a tiny little bit of cement to hold this in. Um, anyway, I'm glad I did because I did pop it out now and again just to uh, secure uh, and to ensure fitting um, on the other components when I was putting in the main frame. But it wasn't really necessary. The fit was really good. Next to be fitted was the rear view mirror. 
Then going on to the windows, and I'm using Formula 560 canopy glue to fit those windows. Um, I think it's essential to use something like this. A white PVA glue will do it as well. This is to stop fumes emitting onto the actual glass and fogging up the glass or the plastic. And then it's onto the side windows. Now the side, the side windows put up against the actual frame, but there's also a little recess um, on the main frame um, or the interior where it sits into. So they're quite easy to place on. It's now time to fit the main frame. Um, this again was a, a very easy uh, fit, uh, went in beautifully. Making sure that I place the engine and force into the bay, as you can see there, before holding it down. The contact points are quite small, um, which is a good thing. Uh, you, you don't have a lot of glue build up. So now I'm painting the, the brackets that are going to be holding the chrome bumpers. And I'm painting them in Revel Agricolor 08 Matte Black. So there's two sets to paint here depending on what version you do. If you're doing the stock version from the factory, the, um, you have to do the, both um, brackets, both pairs, so a pair for the back, pair for the front. But if you're doing the grease version, you only have to do the back pair. And then it's back to Rebel of Color 04 Gloss White. And this is for the mount for the um, rear lights. After a bit of masking off, I'm using Rebel of Color, color 90 silver and this is for the trims along the door. Now I didn't have a go painting these freehand but I had a little bit too much coffee at this point and I wasn't confident enough so I just used a little bit of masking tape to help me. I can now place on the brackets for the real bumper and they just fit onto the main frame. There is a little recess that they fit into. I painted the hood or bonnet uh, the, in the same manner as the body, so using the masking tape and the silver paint to paint the trims. And then just to finish up, I'm using a bit of black paint just to um, tidy up some of the paintwork on the connection points. The plastic for the lights came in the actual colour red, so I didn't have to paint them. So it was just a simple case of placing them on the mount, then placing them out on, on the actual bodywork. And then the rear number plate went on. Once the barrackets were dry, I was able to put on the first bumper. Now these, um, it felt a bit strange. They just sat on the bracket without touching the actual bodywork. And so it took a little bit of balancing to get them right. Next to go on are the windscreen wipers. These were a little bit fiddly to go on. But um, with a little bit of patience, I was able to fit them. And then the front radiator was able to go on. That just slotted right in its position without any fuss. Next to be fitted are the two hinges for the uh, bonnet which will hold on to the actual bodywork. Um, as you can see they're L shaped. Now you don't have to do this if you're having the bonnet down, but I'm going to have mines open. Here I'm placing the clear parts for the front uh, lights on. I was better to do this while it's on the spruce so I've got a stable base to hold them. So it's just a bit of canopy glue before placing on the actual uh, clear part. So this is where I noticed I had put this part in the wrong place. Initially I had it right at the top of the area there, but it had to come down. Um, the instructions weren't 100% clear, but it's mostly my fault. But because um, I only used tiny amounts of cement on the actual frame, it was not a problem taking that off and uh, taking the uh, part off that was wrong and just bringing it down to its proper position. The front number plate was quite tricky to fit. It has to go in between these two bars here on this frame. Um, i done it on the spray to make it a little bit easier, but there was a zero tolerance. I had to get it spot on for it to touch the other frame. And it took a little while to do because it kept on dropping out. Next to go on were the lights, and they, they just fell into the holes beautifully. The, there was only a little bit of glue needed, and uh, they just went straight in. And then the, it was time for the bottom bar to go on that's got the number plate on. And that actually sits in the, the part that I put in the wrong place, so this is why I had to change it. But it all makes sense now, now that I, I knew how it went. It's mostly my fault that I got it in the wrong place. So now it's time for the handles, and the, these were tricky as well. They're very small parts, and a tiny amount of cement is needed. So I had to be very careful putting these on. 
and it was the same with the wing mirror as well. In fact, um, this came off a couple of times, um, which was very frustrating. Next to go on is the lower roof canvas that just fitted right in. There was no issues whatsoever with that. Now it's onto the decals. Before I, I do them, the number plate decals are, are a bit strange. These are not actual decals. Um, these have to be um, attached with a little bit of white glue. Why everything's a decal apart from these, I'm not 100% sure. So I had to cut them right to the actual plate itself. And then I added the white glue to the number plate holder before placing the number plate on. I mean, it was easy enough to do, but um, it was just strange it wasn't a decal. So now I've speeded this up, it's time to put the decals on. These are going in the normal way, just a little bit of solution and uh, sliding all the decals into position. They, they went on fairly well. Um, they, are, they, they are awkward because of the shape of the lightning bolts. But um, apart from that, just a little bit of press perseverance and uh, they went on. The ones for the side panels um, had to be either cut or trimmed while uh, in position uh, because they um, went over the trim. Now the um, instructions say that, uh, fit them over the trim and leave them, but that just didn't look right at all to me. And after looking at some photos, of course the trim is visible all the way down the line of the car. So uh, I had to cut them and make sure they, they fitted that way. It was a minor irritant, but um, if you're not experienced enough, you just leave them over um, or you end up in a mess, ripping the decals and so forth. So all that's left to do is a, a bit of varnish. So I've got a gloss varnish here from Galleria and I'll just put a thin coat on everywhere. There, there is body work, not on the tyres and interior, of course. So I'll bring part four to an end here. Part five will be the uh, final review. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my other videos. If you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and you'll be kept up to date not only in this build, but all my future builds as well of course. Hit that like button, leave a comment and don't forget to share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.